Hi everyone, this is Jeanette. In this video, I'm going to talk about how two employees had plotted to create harm to my health while I was nursing patients back to health at New York Presbyterian Hospital. It was Sunday, June 6, 2010. As always, the unit was chaotic and short-staffed. But my concern was the two workers that I dreaded working with, Erika Stanley and Karen Bukal, because they are among those who had made several fellow attempts, you know, to create unnecessary drama. So as soon as I realized they were on the unit, I knew there was a 100% chance it was going to be a sad day. Because they, they had done anything, everything to, you know, to deflate my happiness. But I didn't expect them to stoop that low. So after taking reports on my patient, I proceeded with my normal routine. But when I reached room 228, bet it was empty. But there was a female sitting on the chair, so I said, where is my patient? She said, well, I'm her mother, and she went for a procedure. So I introduced myself. And I said, if you need anything, just call me. And I went to bed B. That patient was sitting at the edge of the bed. She looked kind of annoyed, but that, that, it's a new overflow. I introduced myself and I said, my name is Jeanette. And can I, is there anything you want? You want to get washed? You know, she was like, no. And I said, anyway, I'm going to put my name on the board. If you need anything, just call me. On my way out, I stopped. And I struck a conversation with my patient's mother. Even though it's against the, the hospital policy, I always communicate with my patients and their loved ones. Because you'll you, you be surprised how, how grateful they are. And I learn a lot from my patients. You know, they, all, they each have a story and they're ready to tell anyone who's willing to listen. And I was always there. I received several verbal warnings because there were co many complaints that I, was, I spent too much time uh, with the patients. In any case, I left and I proceeded with room 229 and 30 and so forth and so on. At 11, I went on my 15 minutes break. Coming back at 11.15, Karen Bukal met me at the corner. Before I even reached the nursing station, she came in. And she, she, stopped, she, she came in, she met me right there. I don't know how she knew I, I was coming, but she met me right there. And she said, Jeanette, we have a problem, a big problem. I said, okay, what is the problem? She said, uh, the patient in room 228B is crying. And she said, you were very nasty. You were very mean to her. And then she said she had to call the nurse director, the supervisor, the administrator, the CIA, the KGB and the A-team, they were all coming. It was kind of strange because during the week when patients were calling, I mean, uh, for like 20 minutes for a bed pain, there was no one. And there was no one downstairs uh, to call. And uh, on a Sunday, someone was coming, the, the entire team was coming because a patient said that I was nasty. I was totally flabbergasted. I was shocked. I'm like, are you kidding me? He said, yes, yeah, Jeanette. I don't go to the room. After I regained my composure, I said, well, I'm going to the room. Because I'm like, where did that come from? I mean, what happened? I had never... Okay. I was totally shocked. So after I regained my composure, I went to the room. I made my way to the room. When I arrived, Guess what I saw? Karen Bukal, a six feet two. She, a patient was flat on her back. Karen leaned over. She was whispering to the patient. That's unprofessional. I don't know. I'm like, why would you do that? A patient just made an, a complaint. And then you leaning, talking to her in a whisper. What the hell are you telling her? So I stepped back. And I asked uh, uh, my patient's mother, Be Edby, to step aside. And when she came out, and I said to her, do you know that that patient just said uh, 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 that I was nasty to her? She said, no, Jeanette, not you. She said, oh, do you want me to speak to somebody? I said, well, there's a team coming. Maybe you tell them exactly what had happened. She said, well, Jeanette, I will be here, and I will tell him what I witnessed. 
Okay, in the meantime, as I was talking to her, there was a traffic going on. Uh, Karen Bukal was in and out, and Erica Stanley was in and out. Erica is the one who was always hiding in the medicine room because she never wanted to be part of a patient. And all of a sudden, she was like in and out, like she really cared. I mean, uh, but for some reason, I thought there was a shred of, of humanity in her. So I called, I said, Erica, can I speak to you? She approached us. I said, well, this lady here saw what happened. She heard what had happened. Erica said, well, Jeanette, I don't want to get involved. And she walked off. So uh, I, I'm like, I was still perplexed. I was like, oh, my, my brain was totally hijacked. I'm like, what? But as I walked toward the nursing station, there was a tornado coming. A six feet two female, you know, her, her bleached blonde hair was flying all over the place. It was Noel, the nurse supervisor, a woman with a, you know, with a permanent suntan. If she had muscle tones, she could have easily been passed as a, a, a female wrestler or a bodybuilder. There was another one with her. That one is always nice. You know, she was always nice to me. And Noel came in, Jeanette, can I stick with you? I mean, like she was coming for a major bust. So we stepped into the lounge room. She said, Jeanette, I was under the impression she was going to ask me for my side of the story, like they do in America. But no, Noel was pissed off because I have a witness. What do you think happened? While Erica said to me, well, Jeanette, I don't want to get involved, she went and called them and let them know that I have a witness so she sh you know, to, to make them aware that I was prepared so they shouldn't talk to my witness. So I said, no, well, of course, the, that patient's mother, she was there, she saw what happened, so she's willing to tell you. She was like, well, Jeanette, you should never ask her. I'm like, okay, because at New York Presbyterian Hospital, I'm guilty until proven, even if, even when I when proven innocent. That's the, the that's the code to go by. Jeanette is guilty even when proven innocent. So Noel went into the room. I don't know what she said to the patient, and then she left. A few minutes later, I went into the room. The patient's mother was still sitting, and she stepped out. So she said, Jeanette, I did talk to them. I said, okay. She said, you know what? They communicated with the patient. They didn't ask me for anything. So I, I ran behind them and I told them, wait a minute, stop. I saw what happened. And that woman saved the day. But she also said something. She said, Jeanette, those two were coaching the patient. I know for a fact they were doing that. That is exactly what they do. And she said, they were coaching her. And I said, okay. She said, Jeanette, if you want me to call anyone, you know. And she basically gave me her number, her, her, her work number and her cell number. She said, Jeanette, call me. And she was willing to send a letter to New York Times and report what had happened because that was unfair. That was totally unfair. But what Karen Bucal and Erica Stanley failed to realize, that lady observed everything. She observed them microscopically. Everything they had done that day, she observed. She said, Jeanette, those two are terrible. I came from uh, being shocked to being pissed off, so I wanted to retaliate. But the thought that I was thinking is against my dignity. So I said, I had to do something. So I went to the emergency room. I felt that I was, I was really pissed off and I didn't want to spend the rest of the day with them. I, I just wanted to get away from them. Even though when, even after the patient mother told me, Jeanette, those two are up to no good. They were up to no good. They coached the patient and that's what they did. I didn't do anything to the patient. I didn't do anything for her. So how could she say that I was nice, I, I was um, being nasty to her? And patient had never, ever complained against me. Never. So I was totally shocked. If I had any medical condition, I would have gone to a total cardiac arrest. Thank God. So far, I don't have anything. 
I didn't have anything and I still don't have anything as a result. But that type of pressure because of, of what they had tried to put me through and that day could have been it. Anyone with, you know, with a medical, you know, with, who was medically challenged would not survive that day because they had every intention to temper with my health. And I hope they all, they both write in hell. And I will tell you what happened in the next video.